What is up, Rosemary Josh here? Today's video is all about high tier battleship play. Recently, I've been playing a lot more because I've noticed that high tier battleships have been playing terribly. I don't know what it is. It seems like there's waves of people trying out battleships, people trying out destroyers, and of course, it's going to be because of missions and stuff like that. But it's the battleships I've been seeing recently are so. The target selection is awful. All you do is you kind of see that low tier strategy of battleships just only wanting to shoot at battleships and battleships only wanting to just brawl all the battleships and if i take that battleship out then i've done my job that's not really the job of a battleship you know there's a rock paper scissors of kind of everything and right there you're just trying to kind of just a rock take out of a take out a rock almost and i really feel like a lot of people just don't know the right target selection and the right kind of uh, uh, if this is here, then do this. If this is here, then do this. I just don't think a lot of people do. So whenever, you know, whenever you get a weak set of battleships in the game, maybe you lose a game because of a battleship, I tend to kind of play the Montana. I don't know why. It just gives me that little peace of mind. I think we put a nice little hit on this room. I don't know if we miss them. Oh, that was the one that threw on the break, so he gets a couple over pens. But there's a, there's a pretty simple rule of thumb I kind of take when I'm playing any ship. Honestly, when I'm playing any ship, but especially battleships, because they have that range, they have that hit power, and they have the ability of just obliterating a ship off the face of the planet in one salvo, or, you know, if you get god tier dispersion like this, you can really hurt anything, even a rune at distance, because close range, you can't really do anything, but, you know, there you go. So there's Devastating Strike number one. So, for me, and this is the what I try to teach everybody, this is what I preach, this is what I do whenever I can, Breakdown of ships to focus on, and, and that is the first thing. If if a CV is within reasonable range, CVs are always number one. Now, of course, there are situations where if you know if if you know a CV is 18 kilometers and there's a destroyer at five kilometers, yeah, you're gonna pick the destroyer. But basically, if, if a CV is within a reasonable range and the situations are correct for it, CVs are number one. It just is. The CV is is the is the most controlling uh, class in the entire game you, you want to get if you can get the enemy cv off is uh, get out of, get them out of the game as fast as possible and you know gg easy you just want to kill that cv as possible so you know use your use your you know your head is this the right thing is it close enough is there something much closer blah 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 so cvs of course number one two destroyers if a destroyer is close Put damage into that destroyer. I don't care if you're a battleship. I don't care if you're a cruiser. I don't care if you're another DD. Put damage into that destroyer. Of course, if you're super low and the DD is full life and you're a DD as well, don't be throwing, you know, if you have a thousand life and it's a cab at, at, at seven kilometers, don't be throwing shells at like that. But if you can, especially a battleship, especially anything, put that salvo into a destroyer. Even if you get four over pens, that's 4,000 damage. For most destroyers, that's a third of their life, a quarter of their life in one salvo. So give your DDs that advantage. A Shimakaze going against a, a gearing, which it tends to lose, that fight gun for gun. If you put a salvo and get four overpens into that gearing, it's going to kill that gearing. The Shima will win that fight. So DD, oh, CVs first, DD second. So right here, I have battleships, a Yamato broadside. I have you know a, a Mogami 18 kilometers. I'm taking that shot at that Shimakaze every day of the week. Um, twice on Sundays, there's there's no way I'm not taking that shot. Four over pens, boom, right there. We did three, four thousand damage. Our Shima is going to win that fight a hundred percent of the time now. Guns for guns, he just is. He has that advantage. So whenever you can, CVs first, DDs next. Help your DDs out. Get that win. If a team doesn't have destroyers, they don't have the vision, they don't have the torpedoes, they don't have the caps. You're going to win yourself the game by helping kill those destroyers. Next. Even though battleships are all sailing nice and broadside, as you can see, I'm kind of looking at other cruisers, especially one flanking right here. So that Yamato is perfectly broadside. I could easily go maybe get him for a couple citadels or something like that, help my team out. We have so many ships shooting at him. I'm going to try to help this flank, so I could have probably hit that guy. Who knows? Maybe I could have killed that Yamato right there. But I wanted to help with the flank. We end up getting a citadel on that guy, so it works out for me. So... CVs first, DD second, cruisers next. Cruisers are kind of like almost use the analogy of like almost a tree, right? Kind of cruisers are that the trunk of the tree, right? It's the highest played class. It depends on of course what what missions and campaigns are going on, but most of the time the cruisers are the bigger bigger player base, and there's going to be a decent amount of cruisers in each game. So take those cruisers out. What that means is your battleships are going to be relatively far away. And they won't have that cruiser support again, giving your destroyers that chance to win. So, 
there you go take off the cruisers they're super fragile you know even at a no angle shot like that i gotta sit it on them you have those big calibers use them kill those cruisers off if you can and of course boom yugumo my next shot's going on this yugumo 100 percent we're just going to absolutely blop this guy even though again there's a battleship right there there's a mogami right there i'm going to help kill this dd as much as i can and help my team out so Put a nice little hit into him. Right now, we got two kills so far. We did snag. I will be honest. We did snag, and we're going to put a nice hit on this dude. Uh, another 4K, so boom. Um, did put a, a, a nice hit into the rune, so we got a devastating strike on him. And then we got a nice little, I would say, kill steal on the Imano for about a 1,000 damage. So we helped kill that Yugumo as well. And here we go. Broadside sailing cruisers. We helped kill two of their DDs. We helped, you know, we helped the team out by taking care of the guy on the flank by putting a little damage into him. And so... We can just start pushing. I can push up because we've slowly and meticulously taken them out. Boom. Another cruiser dead. I don't, like, people want to farm, you know, I, it's it's so crazy watching some battleships play and just, like, all they want to do is just shoot at the Yamato, just shoot at that, just shoot at this. You know, I probably could have farmed, you know, some damage off of those Yamatos, probably could have got those kill off the Yamatos, but our cruisers could have probably been killed right there. We have no deaths so far. No deaths because we've systematically taken them out, right? So, helping your DDs out as much as possible and taking out those ships, you know. Of course, I have that shot. I'm waiting for the Mogami. He's hidden right there. So, that's why I'm kind of holding my shot right now because he's full life. Now, his, his friend was sailing nice and broadside. And so, he's going to sail nice and broadside as well. And there we go. Second devastating strike so far. Fourth kill. Taking out those cruisers. Taking out those DDs, those, uh, those CBs if you can, and helping out. Now... We just should basically just hang out the rest of the time. We can just, you know, kind of help do these, help like farm these guys. We have the cruisers, you know, worst case scenario is they maybe hit one of our cruisers pretty hard, maybe kill a cruiser, but we're so far ahead because we had a battleship focusing on taking out the fragile ships instead of just trying to 1v1 them. And can we get one more, you know, good dispersion? I, I, I prayed to the, the, the dispersion gods and, all right, Edinburgh. Ended up getting another Citadel on you. There we go. <laughs> Cracking just like that. The, the chat is filled with with my medals. That's it, guys. Leave the battleships for last. They're, they are the tanking class. We absolutely smashed this team because one of our top tier battleships was shooting the right targets and just slowly beating up, you know, beating up the team. Cruisers first. DD second. Or, or see, sorry. Don't, don't listen to that. CVs first, if within range. There's always an asterisk there. Don't be trying to throw 22 kilometer shots at, at a CV. It's just not worth it. So, CVs first, if 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 decent range. Work on those destroyers. Give your team that massive advantage of getting their their DDs low, helping helping your cruisers, helping your DDs kill those other DDs. Then work on the cruisers. Take those cruisers out of the game. Let your let your DDs push up farther. Let your DDs get that advantage, and then leave the battleships for last. There's no reason spending time putting tons of salvos into a tanking class. That's what they're there for, guys. That's what they're there. Target selection, work on it. Especially high tier BBs. If you just take out the fragile ships, there's no reason to take the guy that's going to bounce half your salvo. So really just to just kind of help, help you guys out. This is my thought process whenever I play. As you can see, I was holding the salvos for certain ships, um, just knowing, and this is kind of what I think about when I'm playing. We had a tier 10 game that lasted like 10 minutes because we just slowly beat up their team. It's amazing how one battleship can kind of influence an entire game. Yeah, we got lucky with a couple salvos. Yeah, we got lucky with the perfect RNG of dispersion. And luckily, a division of Mogamis were selling broadside for me. But if you use that thought process throughout all of your games, playing a battleship, instead of just trying to, okay, that battleship's uh, throwing broadside, time to throw a salvo at him. Work on taking out those trees, take out the foundation of the destroyers and the cruisers and leave those battleships for last, guys. They're going to be there for a while. They have their heels. Take out the fragile ships that can't do too much, and you'll win more games, I promise. Hope this video helped you guys out. A nice little game, not setting any records for damage, but a nice Kraken, quick, painless, three devastating strikes. Sorry, cruisers. Battleships can still knock your, knock your block off. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember, like, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.